All right, today we're going to do the Starburst Rock Cy Cycle Lab. Uh, so what we're going to do first is for our rock cycle, we are going to take three pieces of Starburst candy, okay, and we're just going to cut them up. Now each candy is going to represent a rock, and we're going to break that rock down, which will turn those pieces into sediments. So we're going to go through the the wed process. We're going to weather it by breaking it down, and we're just going to cut it into thirds. Okay, and then we're going to take those thirds and cut them into thirds again. So there's one, two. So I'm going to end up with nine pieces of each color candy. All right, now that we have all of our sediment made, it's all been weathered down through the wet process, we're going to just sketch that out real quick. So I'm going to use the same colors that I have Starburst candies, and I'm going to just fill in what I see drawing what I see here with all of my sediment. Okay, so we said we went through the wet process, the weather and erosion deposition to make our sediments. So every arrow that I have pointing to the sediments, I'm going to label with wed so we know that all of those rocks went through the wet process to create those sediments. Okay. Now, in order to make a sedimentary rock, we know that those sediments have to go through a process called compaction and cementation where those layers of sediment are going to stack up on top of each other keep putting more and more pressure down, more and more weight down to compact all of those sediments together and then the minerals are going to dissolve inside and then crystallize which will form our sedimentary rock. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to quickly take all of the pink sediment first and I'm just going to push those all together so they stick. I'm not going to do a whole lot of extra pushing because I want to see all the different sediment together. I don't want it to be all flat and not be able to see anything. So we can see all the different sediment there for my first layer. Then I'll take all the yellows and I'll start pressing those down on top because as more sediment gets put on we have more of that compaction happening and the stickiness of the candy is acting as our cementation to hold everything together so now I have two layers and notice how the pink layer now is squished even more than the yellow layer. That's because of that, um, all that added weight and pressure of the layers of sediments above. Now I'm going to add my red layer in here. And the yellow layer isn't going to be as bumpy and as prominent as it was before because there's a new layer on top compacting it down. So there's my rock. So you can see now, when we look to the side, let me zoom in for you, that we have this first layer has been compacted down, so it's smaller. Then you have the middle layer where it's starting to get compacted down too, and the top layer of sediment all cemented together after it's been compacted, giving us a sedimentary rock. Okay, and here where you can see all of the different pieces of sediment, okay, reminds me of a conglomerate rock, which is sedimentary. All right, so 
now that we have our sedimentary rock made, we need to draw that out. So I'm going to draw it just as I see it. Okay, I'm going to draw my pieces of sediment. And I'm going to make those a little bit, the outlines of them a little bit darker. And then fill them in a little bit lighter so I can see the difference in sediment. I don't want to just have it one big flat red piece because that's not what the rock is. The rock has all the different sediment bumping out on it. So I'm going to continue to draw all of that. Uh, all right, so now I have all of that sedimentary rock down. Zoom in a little bit so you can see. So you can see here the little bit of the pink that you can still see that got compacted really flat, then the yellow in the middle with my red on top. All right, so now that I have that rock, sedimentary is done. Oop, too far. Next, we're going to make a metamorphic rock. Now, for a metamorphic rock, we know that we need heat and pressure. So on my arrows that go to metamorphic rock, I'm going to write heat and pressure. And then over here on this one coming from the igneous, I'm going to write heat and pressure. Now, in this lab, to show the heat and pressure, I'm going to take my sedimentary rock here and I'm going to put it into a baggie so I don't get as sticky. Let all the air out of it, seal it up. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just rub it in between my hands like this so I can get a lot of heat. Now don't just hold it there. That will get some heat, but get that friction going from the rubbing of, of your hands together and that will get more heat. What you want is you want it to be so it's nice and easily bendable and pliable, okay, so we can then put some pressure on it. So we have to heat it up first. So I'm going to go ahead and heat up this okay. rock. I've got it heated up pretty well now. So you can see I can bend it pretty easy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it in the bag. I'm going to set it down. Take a couple of textbooks. And I'm just going to add some pressure to it. Okay, so now you can see it's flattened down pretty good here. So then I'm going to take my rock out of the bag. I'm going to fold it over one time like that. Put it back in the bag. And I'm going to add some more pressure to it. Okay, so there's my metamorphic rock. Okay, you can see that it's all distorted. It doesn't look like it did as a sedimentary rock anymore. Because of that heat and pressure, things got kind of spread out and smoothed out um, to give me a different type of rock. Now, one thing I forgot, you can see there's a little loop here. I can turn a metamorphic rock into a new metamorphic rock with heat and pressure. Okay, Just as I could do a sedimentary rock, put it into through the wet process to create a new sedimentary rock. Okay, So now that I have my metamorphic rock here, I'm going to sketch it out right here in my metamorphic rock box and then we'll go and look at the process. All right. So we have our metamorphic rock drawn now. Okay, we have one last type of rock to create, and that's an igneous rock. Now, before we can turn it into an igneous rock, it has to go through the melting process. So it has to melt here first and turn into magma, and I'm going to write or lava on here. Okay, so we have to melt it first. So the metamorphic rock can melt it, 
and the sedimentary rock can melt to form the magma or lava that we need to create our igneous rock. So we're going to get a hot plate. Okay. And we're going to take a piece of tin foil and we're going to just make a nice little bowl on it. Now inside of that bowl I'm going to take just a little bit of cooking spray. Okay. Kind of hard to see but I sprayed it with cooking spray. It'll just help the igneous rock when it cools to come out of there better and it won't tear and you won't have little pieces of foil in your igneous rock um, when you do that. So we're going to put the metamorphic rock in there and this is going to be the melting process. So I've got my hot plate on so it can start to melt. Now when it starts to melt it's going to melt around the edges first okay, and then as it starts to bubble a little bit and the middle starts to get softer you can just kind of mix it around a little bit just to make sure that everything gets um, melted evenly and then we'll draw our magma and then we'll let it cool uh, to become an igneous rock. Okay, now that it's finally starting to melt you can see some of that magma forming with all those bubbles. So what I'm going to do, because this is hot, I'm going to use tongs. I'm going to hold on to this thing so it doesn't move around. Now I'm just going to swirl things around a little bit just so that some of that rock in the middle that's not quite melted yet gets mixed in with the really molten rock. And now that we have all of that nice bubbly rock, that is our magma, okay, or our lava. That's what we have to do to any kind of rock to create a new igneous rock. So now that I have that done, I'm going to take it off the heat and I'm going to draw the magma. Okay, in my I have the lava magma drawn in here. So now what we can do is we can take our cooled magma or lava, which is now our igneous rock. Now it's a little bit greasy from the spray, but it came out nice and easy. So I'm just going to set that down there. So now all you have to do is go and you can draw out your igneous rock. Now, from our magma to our lava, we had to, from our magma and lava to an igneous rock, we had to cool. Okay? And if I'm going to turn an igneous rock back into an igneous rock, I have to melt it so it can cool again. So now we have all of our arrows labeled. I'm going to draw my last picture here and then we'll be done and ready to answer the questions on the back side of it. Okay, the and there we go. That is a completed rock cycle diagram to our Starburst Candy Lab. And now what you need to do is flip it over and go through the questions on the back. It goes through kind of what we did on the lab, answer those questions, and have it ready to turn in. Okay, have fun learning about the rock cycle.